A warning from ESCOM about supply challenges and Russia's Putin defends his presidential decision. Good afternoon, I'm Karabo Malati. ESCOM has warned that it expects challenges around electricity demand and supply in the next few weeks. The power utility is doing maintenance on the power system during the summer season and have called on the public to save electricity. The current hot weather has led to an increase in the use of electricity, with households and businesses turning up air conditioning and using swimming pool pumps more regularly. ESCOM spokesperson Hilary Joffe says they want to prevent load shedding but will need the partnership of all South Africans to keep the lights on. We have some issues on the supply side and South Africans can help us and we'd appreciate it on the demand side by reducing their demand for electricity. And that means saving where you can. If people could look at the way they use geysers particularly, which are the biggest users of electricity in any household. Also in some households where they pool pumps or air conditioners, those also use a lot of electricity. So particularly at peak times in the evenings and the mornings. Six construction workers have been injured in Boxburg, two of them seriously, when a truck hit a construction vehicle from behind. It's believed the truck driver fled the scene. ER24 spokesperson Derek Banks has more. Just after two o'clock this morning on the R21 in Jones intersection, a construction vehicle was hit from behind by an articulated truck. Six construction workers were injured in this incident. Two of them are in a very serious condition. One had to be airlifted through to Milton Park Hospital due to the severity of his injuries, while another one had suffered possible neck and back injuries. Four people had suffered minor to moderate injuries. They were all treated on scene by emergency personnel and transported through to a nearby hospital. The N2 south of Durban has been reopened for traffic after a pedestrian bridge collapsed last night, leaving debris on the motorway. The collapse resulted in a 10-car pileup. The bridge was struck by a heavy goods truck that exceeded the normal height. The truck dragged the bridge, which then collapsed. No one was injured. Meanwhile, transport spokesperson Kwanele Ngalane says the truck driver has been arrested and taken to the Montclair police station. We have established that the truck did not have any abnormal load permit and now it has been impounded and the driver of the truck has been arrested. We do have a strict time in terms of abnormal loads. After seven, there should have been no abnormal loads on the road. Do you think this is going to send a very strong warning to all those who are taking chances because this is against the rules of the road? Hundreds of people have been displaced following a spate of fires across the Cape Peninsula. Fires gutted shacks in the Joe Slover informal settlement in Langa and a student hostel in Marlborough. Mwiponi Khatle reports. More than 300 people lost their belongings when a blaze gutted close to 100 dwellings at the Joe Slover informal settlement. Release efforts are being stepped up to assist the families. In Mowbray, police are investigating a case of arson following a fire at a female residence of the Cape Peninsula University of Technology. Five female adults and two males suffered smoke inhalation and were taken to the Groeteskeed Hospital for treatment. Two rooms on the second and third floor of the hostel were damaged. It's alleged that a female student set her room alight after taking medication. Shacks were also raised in Nyanga, West Bank and Parkwood, which affected about 20 people. Mwipone Khatle, SABC News, Cape Town. Shifting focus to news abroad, Russian Prime Minister Vladimir Putin has defended his decision to stand in next year's presidential election. Putin denied it was a quest to retain personal power, insisting that he needed longer to raise living standards and make Russia strong. He's the overwhelming favorite to return to the position he relinquished to President Dmitry Medvedev in 2008. The BBC's Bridget Kendall is in Moscow and has this to say. Meeting with foreign analysts of Russia over dinner, he denied he was driven by personal ambition or a desire to stifle reform. He just needed longer to fulfill his plans to raise living standards and make the country stronger. It doesn't mean that the political system should stagnate, he told us. And of course, we're thinking of ways for the people to have more influence on those in power. 